In this episode, we're going to see what's wrong with this ECU that came out of this car. Uh, it definitely was one of the issues that was going on why this wouldn't start. And uh, I suspect there's a very common issue on it. So let's open it up and see what's going on and attempt to get it fixed. Yeah, so this is a common problem in many ECUs, especially early on when they didn't do, uh, you know, didn't engineer the specs and the electronics as great as they should have been, I guess. I didn't probably put them in harsh environments enough to stress them out to see what could happen. But uh, a lot of ECUs, not just these particular cars, which this is going to be definitely detailed to uh, uh, Eagle Talons, Mitsubishi Eclipses, and Plymouth Lasers, but uh, many cars had this issue. Uh, common signs of them are going to be some clicking and stuff under the dash. Uh, you're going to have maybe a smell of burning electronics or something under the dash, even smoke sometimes seeing. And uh, uh, clicking under the hood happens as well. There's a number of things that come on. It's stumble of the engine. Obviously, it just won't start, which was in the case in this car. That's why I had to do the, what I'm going to do and what I'm going to show you. So uh, I think we should just get on to uh, onto it and uh, show you how to, how to fix the problem uh, and diagnose and fix the problem. So let's get to it. What normally happens with these, uh, before I even dig into it, is capacitors inside uh, leak over time. It's very common in this, this particular ECU, first generation Eagle Talons. And uh, so early on that people were having to change them in the first within 10 years easily, um, especially in harsher environments, which I live in Canada. And uh, yeah, there's a nice little uh, uh, TMO actually, who was that logging I did last time, is one of the ones that put this out. But uh, early, this is a really old document that I printed out years ago. It's dated 2001, uh, which is uh, the internet that most people were not even getting to use the internet probably to the late 90s for most of them. I was an early adopter just because of my job, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, there's three particular capacitors that end up leaking. You can see it apparently on the board. So we're going to take this apart and uh, start with uh, taking the side screws out. There's two screws on each side. Take the cover off. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay. So these guys normally leak. They don't actually look too bad, but I want to see if that's the problem by changing them out anyway. Let's look on the other side of the board. And notice this isn't, it doesn't have an EEPROM, which normally would be here. Because an EEPROM ECU in a 1990 Eagle Talon or Eclipse or Plymouth Laser is very rare. Uh, I don't know how many were made, but it, it's very hard to find. I am fortunate enough to have uh, one in my 1990 car and a backup that's now running this other car that I tried to get running, but uh, we have to fix this one. There are places that fix them, by the way, uh, as well. You know what? It looks very clean in there, but I'm still suspecting these are bad. They don't look like they're, you know, they're enlarged or anything, but uh, I'm going to change them out, and we're going to see if that causes or was the issue with this, uh, since I'm able to get it running with the other ECU. So we'll show you how to take these off, put them back in. So those are the three capacitors, right there, and uh, I guess to match it up, they're right there. Going to replace those. Sometimes. These little amplifiers go bad. I have sourced them in the past. Normally you got to buy a thousand of them, uh, but I have some so found somebody to piece them out, but it's been like 10 years since I've had to replace those. Um, I think they run the ISC, which usually that's just a an issue in itself as far as trying to run and idle properly, but it usually doesn't prevent it from running or starting like we probably have now. That's where these caps hopefully are the issue. So we're going to unsolder them, and I have replacements right here to put in, put them in, and then we're going to try and uh, see if this ECU works like the other one does in the car. 
I've done a lot of soldering on circuit boards in my life, quite a bit actually. Um, back when we did the street troubleshooting um, on stuff like this early in my career uh, was pretty often. Not too often people solder anymore on boards because, well, because everything's disposable now on the boards. But back in the day, we troubleshot all this stuff and replaced components. So there's a couple ways uh, to remove the solder to get these out. This is called solder wick, and this is also a solder sucker. I don't know, so it depends on the application, which one's better. Sometimes I do a little bit of both. I'll try this, and uh, basically it's a, it's a, they say a sucker. Cause a little instant suck like that, and uh, sucks up the solder really quick when it's heated. Try to get it all that way, so that's what I'm going to start with, but sometimes there's still some residual cleanup, and then I'll use the wick after that. So let's, uh, um, another little technique I do is I build up the solder a little bit more because that way it seems to grab the glob more when you do the suck. So make sure you're soldering on the right component. This also, if you solder on it, it gets any, uh, in case there's any spray in here, which I think they do spray a little bit of a film on here to protect it from oxidization a bit. So when you solder on here, like I'm going to do, it kind of, the flux in this actually gets rid of that a little bit. So then you can get a, a good, you know, like I said, dip the solder sucker on there and go from there. So that's, uh, you want to be careful with the heat. Okay, should be able to pull this out. I got that out and make sure that there's a negative side and a positive side on capacitors. You can see that it looks a little bubbled here and you can see where it's leaking here, right there. So this one is definitely leaking. Okay, so that's 100 microfarads at 16 volts. We can put that one in. So the next one I'm doing is the 22 microfarads at 50 volts, which is this guy. You can pull it out. There it is. Let's go to this one too. I can see a little, I don't know if you can see a little leakage there too. So they're definitely leaking. So the last one is the 47 at 50 volts, which is right here. Let's just cut these leads off first. Okay, just to give you an idea which ones they are, there's a little diagram right there, and it shows which the spots are on the back. You can see, yeah, if you look, you can kind of see I'm taking this one out here, and you can see where I've taken them out on right here too, to remove them. If you're not familiar with doing this, don't do it. Take it somewhere. I recommend it. Um, you want to make sure you don't screw up, you don't want to heat it up, because then you start lifting foils, you can break foils, and you don't want to mess these up. These are getting pretty expensive now, everyone, so don't, uh, you know, just pay someone a hundred bucks to do this. It's worth it compared to destroying your ECU, so just be careful if you are doing this, because you can totally destroy the board, and then you're, you know, you can be repaired maybe, but then you're looking at more cost, or worse yet, you've, you've totally destroyed it. Okay, that one's out, just show you that one. So on these newer capacitors, um, it's smaller, but it's actually higher voltage still. 50 volts at 47 microfarads versus um, 47 microfarads at 63 volts. So yeah, this one uh, is smaller, but it's still better than the original. If you look real close too, I don't know if you can notice it, but I can actually see where it's been leaking on the board here. Usually you can see it leak right out of under the, but under the cap here, it's definitely not right. It's leaked a little bit from the capacitor. Again, I'm getting more confident this is the issue, but we're not gonna know until we try it, as I said. Let's hope. Cut these off. I'll do a double check. And put, the, put these two back together, and then put it in the car.
before I actually put this ECU in, I'm going to run it with the good ECU and uh, you can see here that uh, I can still talk to this one, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to put it in kind of logging mode because I just want to log while I'm doing something here. And uh, yeah, so we'll just make sure it starts with the snow and ECU and we'll go in there. So yeah, we're starting to log. Let's see if it starts up. Should. And it does. So we're good there. It's running anyway. If you're wondering where the ECU is in these cars, it's actually uh, kind of in front of the council here. You can see it right, right there. And uh, careful with these connectors in there. They can get pretty brittle taking them out, especially the latches that you push in on the other side here. And they can break, but uh, if you be careful, you should be fine. Turn the key on. And I heard a little noise under the hood that's not clicking. It was clicking before when I did this. That is good news that the caps have done something. Um, so let's connect. And you can see this changed from, I don't know if you caught it, went to a rate rather than uh, disconnect, I believe it was. Let's try this again. See, see it says link down right there. And when I connect, you can see that it changes to a data rate actually. And then I can go DRV2 and then I can see that it's popping up. So that's awesome. So I'm gonna turn on the fuel pump and we're gonna see if this starts. Uh, I sure hope it does. Let's, uh, do a collect data, quick select, and start doing this stuff. Turn the fuel pump on. This is a whole other video why this is like this and not in there. I'm not gonna worry about that for this video. We're just gonna see if this thing actually starts and runs. Well, let's hope so here. <laughs> okay, we're running. This is good news. I mean, it's not running perfect, but it is running. Very happy with that. I'm going to open the door, I think, here. It's fixed. So that's how you can fix an ECU that isn't running. Um, this is bad gas in here, but uh, don't. Uh, it's working. So notice the injectors. Let's see how they're doing here. If I turn this up or speed it up here. OK, I had to switch. Uh, Laptops, my other com port's having trouble. Anyway, I can connect and disconnect. See, link down, connect, rate, DRB2. Actually, if I go to actuators, let's make sure all the injectors are working. Disable one. You can hear it stumble. I'm going to check all the injectors like this. You hear it stumble a bit when you shut an injector off. It's a good way to test to make sure everything is working. So I can tell how smooth it's running that they're working, but I just want to make sure. Injector 3 is definitely stopping it a bit. Injector 4, yeah, same thing. All good there. I'm going to do a log. You collect data. Click select. Play. This is just some of the things you can check. A lot of learning right now, all the trims and everything, because everything has been reset to ground zero. So, the good news is it's running on its own ECU and it is fixed. Awesome. Really good news. Yes, we're fixed. Perhaps I can show you how to uh, look at these a little better someday, but not in this video. Notice this O2 volts here. Uh, that's the blue line here. Uh, it's kind of starting to oscillate up and down, which is really what you want to see really good. Um, if they're not oscillating, that means the O2 sensor is uh, not working well. But this looks like it's working fine, which is really, really awesome. Um, yeah, things are running really well in this car, I can see already. So a special thanks to Technomotive, which is known as TMO. Uh, Timo.com on this 
doesn't exist anymore. It goes to a different place, unfortunately, but uh, this was definitely relevant in the late 90s and early 2000s, this document. Um, I'm sure it's somewhere out on the internet uh, out there, and we've all duplicated, like this video is kind of how to do things as well in replacement of what this document says. But special thanks on this that uh, helped us out a lot back in the day and identified this as an issue. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode, so thanks for watching. And I would say that this usually is at least 75% of the problem of VCUs in these cars. And I said it's also in other cars this happens as well. So it is worth a shot trying to do this to repair it rather than replace an ECU, which somebody else may be selling you an ECU that they did this exact thing to make a profit on it, a lot of profit if they're selling an ECU for a thousand bucks and they got it at a record for 50 bucks. So it's worth a shot. So if you enjoy this episode and like this sort of thing and many other things that I do, Make sure you subscribe, like, and share. Until the next time, make sure you enjoy every day and always make it right.